Hey guys, what's going on? Jay the Reporter checking in with you live once again. Now, what I'm coming at you with this time, we did the NFC East last time. We're going to do the NFC South today. Now, NFC South, home to three of the most star-studded offenses. I guess you could call them in the NFL as far as big names are concerned. So we're going to kind of hop right into this. We're going to get started with the hometown for me, the Carolina Panthers. And starting it off, week one, they got the Oakland Raiders. I'm sorry, the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm just going to call them the Raiders. <laughs> They're going to start off that season with a win. I just believe Carolina's going to come in a little bit more prepared, a little more evened out. And also the Raiders have some question marks. You know, what exactly were they building toward? They did have a strong ending to the season of 2019. But I do believe Carolina coming in just has a little bit better roster. I really like what Matt Rule's doing, trying to build the roster up, build the team up, and he really focused in on where the team was lacking as far as playmaking was concerned last season, which was on defense. And as oddly as that sounds, this may be the least talented team in the division, but I do believe that they are a team that can win in spite of the lack of total talent on the roster. But they do start off with a win against the Raiders, but then the schedule kind of turns in in a weird in a way that's not really favorable for them the next two weeks. They have to then go against the Bucks, and then they have a game against the Chargers. They got both of those being losses. Sorry, Panther fans. But then a little bit of faith, a little bit of that turnaround happens. A win against the Cards in week four, five against the Falcons, week six against the Bears. Three straight wins. Now the team's looking at four and two, giving you some hope. But we all know what hope does. We all know what I do to hope I crush dreams. Team's going to go on a slide after that because the schedule does kind of pick up and the team has been known to split with teams that they are coming up against. Week seven loss against the Saints. I have a week eight loss against the Falcons. Week nine against the Chiefs and week 10 against the Bucks. Yes, I have the Bucks sweeping the Panthers. I just really believe that if the Panthers struggled to beat the Bucks when Jameis was the quarterback, do you really think they stand a chance against Tampa with Tom Brady and Gronk? They're going to be looking a lot like the 2010-ish, 2011-ish um, Patriots. I really do feel that. That's what I'm seeing there. And then a comeback win there against the Lions in Week 11, and then a loss against the Vikings in Week 12, which – has the team sitting there with five wins, seven losses. I know that can hurt a lot of feelings, but then we're going to end up last four games. They're going to wind up alternating win-loss, win-loss. Week 14, Broncos. Week um, 15 with the Packers. Week 16, Redskins. Week 17, Saints. So win against the Broncos, loss against the Packers, win against the Redskins, and a loss against the Saints. Has Carolina ended up seven and nine? Now, ending up basically the same record they had last year. Well, not same record. They were 6-10 and 10 last year. But seeing how the team's been, been built, they brought in Teddy Bridgewater as a better quarterback option than what they had last year outside of Cam. Um, but that's the only real improvement I saw really made on the roster. Well, bringing in Robbie Anderson helps as well. But it's still they don't have that number one guy. And when you struggle with to find a number one guy, it's tougher to win, especially in a division that has really good defense and outstanding offense. So that means you're going to force Teddy Bridgewater to be what he's not, and that can honestly wind up nullifying the power of the offenses in the in the division, can wind up nullifying the greatness that they have at running back with Christian McCaffrey. So the only way I see Carolina doing better than 7-9 and nine this year is if Christian McCaffrey goes God-tier mode like he did last year, but the team's defense cannot allow lapses like they had last year, especially when they played the Saints and even in the um, Falcon game where they got absolutely destroyed. You want to make sure that the team doesn't completely falter and fold on itself. And I do believe a lot of um, fresh air being breathed into the organization, new coach, new regime, new quarterback, new basically everything. But I do think the departures that Carolina had does hinder them from being an 8-8, eight and eight, maybe even a 9-7 and seven ball club. So 79 is where I got Carolina. Next up, we're going to go down even a little bit further south to Atlanta. And Atlanta starts off the year against the Seahawks. That's going to be a loss. Then the following week against the Cowboys, I got that as a loss. Then a win against the Bears. And basically, the season's going to already be lost just like it was last year with another poor start. Loss against the Packers, loss to the Panthers, loss to the Vikings. So now the team is sitting at 1-5. 
but the schedule does ease up a little bit in the middle. Win against the Lions, win against the Panthers, win against the Broncos. Now you're going into the break four and four. So giving yourself some hope, but it doesn't get better from there because now the hard part of the schedule rears its ugly head. Loss against the Saints, win against the Raiders, loss against the Saints, win against the Chargers. Then you have the Bucks, Chiefs, and Bucks again. Those are going to be teams that are gearing up for playoff runs, playoff seeding. They're not going to come in there with kick gloves on. They're going to come in trying to assert dominance early, and I believe those are going to be teams that can actually do it. So, sorry, Atlanta, 6-10. and 10. I know everyone's thinking with Todd Gurley, what can they do? I don't believe Todd Gurley's going to be that much of a difference maker. The team doesn't even know how healthy the man is. How are you going to trust the guy? You know how healthy it is. So, I don't believe that's really going to be something that, is, that they should be leaning on. I mean, they still got two of the better wide receivers in their division, two of the best wide receivers in football, honestly. But it doesn't help them much. And given the fact that they underperformed last year and then with the departure of certain guys like Vic Beasley, I don't really think they really did a good job replacing some of these guys. So we're going to see how well Atlanta does. But 6-10, and 10, probably no better than that. Their schedule is just hell on wheels out the gate and typically when you get a team out the gate and it's a struggle to win early it's going to be a struggle to win almost at all but six and ten a step down from last year so that's kind of where we got them sitting right now so moving forward we got the tampa bay buccaneers and they're gonna start the year with the saints now with the saints starting off that year it's going to start with a loss, but then they wear off some great wins. Not even say necessarily great wins because the schedule does get relatively easy. Win against the Panthers, win against the Broncos, win against the Chargers, win against the Bears. And then their first real challenge will be the Packers. I got them winning that, then a win against the Raiders, then a win against the Giants, and then another loss to the Saints. I just believe that defensively the Saints have just enough to get past the Bucks. And then you have a win against the Panthers again, so it's a sweep of the Panthers, then a win against the Rams, then a loss to the Chiefs. I just believe the Chiefs at that point, they're going to be vying for the number one seed in the AFC. They're not going to be looking to catch an L, not that late in the year. And then you also have a loss against the, then you have a bye week, and then a loss against the Vikings, who I believe have one of the most complete rosters in all of football. So when you have a team with a roster that complete, they can run the ball, they can throw the ball, depending on weather conditions and things like that. And as long as it's not a primetime game, I'm going to trust Kirk Cousins to possibly get that done and also the Vikings defense to get that done. And then you have to winning three in a row to end it, a win against the Falcons, a win against the Lions, and then another win against the Falcons. So it's a sweep of Carolina, a sweep of Atlanta, and everyone kind of knew going into a Tampa Bay point blank. They're going to be like that this year. I don't see a Tom Brady-led team not winning 10 to 12 games in a season. I just don't see that happening. So with that being the case, I do see them coming forth, getting the win that's necessary, getting the wins that are necessary to make the playoffs. And then people are actually going to see how good this team actually was and how much the non-development of Jameis Winston actually hurt the team. So I'm not saying that Jameis was the bad quarterback in any, in any standard like that. He's not a terrible quarterback. He's not really the greatest quarterback either. I just believe a guy who doesn't turn over the football like Tom Brady can actually have his team win games, given the fact that Tampa should have won at least 10 games last year if it wasn't for pick sixes. Take away the pick sixes in those ball games, Tampa Bay's a 10-win ball club. Now, moving on to the last team in that division, but definitely not going to be the last team in that division, the New Orleans Saints. The most complete team in the division from top to bottom. Best head coach in the division. To me, best quarterback, active quarterback in that division. Best run game in that division. Well, second best run game. Chris McCaffrey clearly is the complete offense in Carolina. But not too far off is Alvin Kamara and those boys down there in New Orleans. And the biggest addition a lot of people aren't talking about in the offseason, a lot of people are talking about, oh, this team added that, this team added that. Well, one of the best additions that a team had was New Orleans getting Emmanuel Sanders. That was huge. That was huge. Again, that was huge for New Orleans, getting a legit number two receiver. So they're going to start off the season, to me, on an absolute tear. Win against the Bucks. Then a win against the Raiders, win against the Packers, destroying the Detroit Lions, win against the Chargers, then a bye week. Because apparently you need a break from all that winning. Then a win against the Panthers, a win against the Bears. And actually, I'm going to amend 
um, one of these. It's going to be a win against the. It's going to be a win against the Bucks. Yeah, them, yeah. Actually, yeah, it is a win against the Bucks. So actually, the Bucks are going to wind up. The Bucks are going to get swept by the Saints. Then I got a win against the Falcons, win against the Broncos, another win against the Falcons, and a win against the Eagles, a loss to the Chiefs, a win against the Vikings, and a win against the Packers. This team is going to go 14 and 2. Okay? 14 and 2 for the New Orleans Saints. I just see that being the case with this team. They're just really well put together. And when it comes down to a race and they have the history in that division of when it's a race of one team against the other. Typically, New Orleans comes out on top of that. And when they had those races against Carolina at the end, New Orleans came out on top. And those were some of the games where I was like, man, if Carolina wins, they control the division. They just didn't have it. I believe the Saints being battle-tested can get that done. And I do believe this may be the year the Saints get over the hump in the NFC outside of maybe the 49ers just being a little bit better. But if New Orleans has the matchup against San Francisco, I got them winning that game. We're going to see how all that goes once the season progresses. If we have one, hopefully we do have one. I really want us to have one. But if the season progresses, I do see New Orleans being one of those top-tier teams yet again. They're just too good in all facets of the game to not be right there. But, guys, let me know what you think about these selections down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. My name is Jada Reporter, signing out. Peace.